Thank you so much for coming. Hallelujah. Tonight there is something that is so close to my heart that I want to talk about. Hallelujah. And it's called pain. And this time around I gave it a title antidote to any pain. Praise the Lord. Antidote to any kind of pain. You 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 you've got to preach with me. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I will divide it into two and we shall have part 2 next week. God allowing us in Jesus name. Amen. So ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, have you ever encountered any pain? Clearly you are sitting with your enemy. <laughs> ask them, have you ever encountered any pain? Yes. I believe the answer is yes. Praise the Lord. Even Jesus, the moment he put on this flesh, he encountered pain. Praise the Lord. So I discovered there are two categories of pain. Hallelujah. And you're going to preach with me, amen. There are two categories of nice. Woo! Now I know why the teachers always told us to reply and they caned us the moment we didn't. He could even say this one is for the back benchers. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So there are two categories of pain that I've discovered in life. And before I even go into it I've discovered pain takes shape. Hallelujah. So one of it is heart pain. Tell your neighbor heart pain. Heart pain. And this pain it it also arises from a couple of things. And I wrote down around 3 and one of it there is that heart pain that you get in your heart. Now this kind of pain you cannot touch it. You cannot like even show it to anyone. But deep inside you you are hurting praise the lord o wuli do bulumi munda muchi mugwe you are hurting you can't even explain it that even when somebody asks asks you that how are you you just say i am fine simply because when you begin to explain how you are the cows will come home until you are explaining and this heart pain arises from a couple of things praise the lord it arises from a couple of things and most of these things they resonate with us hallelujah this message is very very practical because the biggest part of this message i think i'm talking about my past praise the lord these they are those that arise from a loss tell your neighbor a loss a loss that pain that arises from a loss praise the lord it could be a loss of a loved one hallelujah and then you feel pain it could be a loss of a job hallelujah praise the lord it could be a loss of a job it could be loss of money you had you had some money and You lose you, you lose it. I, I saw a man uh, recently on social media. Ya firma million 10 I remember and Navaco you praise the Lord. And then he destroyed an entire organization because he was feeling pain and he didn't know how to handle pain. And in his own understanding he thought by doing that he could handle the pain but assuredly I said to you the pain remained. Praise the Lord. loss of a contract loss of an equipment assets land you've had people you lose a big chunk of land and people feel pain and that pain goes over and over and over for so many years and then to the young people those who love soccer and the la- man you guys can resonate with this you lose a game and you feel pain praise the lord 
that when somebody they, they I, I see them you know i love soccer so I, you see them and you talk about soccer and and they don't want they want to just slap you praise the lord because they feel pain in their heart you can't touch it but it is there so there is that pain that arises from from losses and, and the thing about this is um When these pains come your way of losses. Now the thing is not about the loss. The thing is what comes after the loss. And this is where the pain comes from. Let me give you an example of, let's say when you, when you lose a job. yeah. So when you lose a job, the, 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 the spirit of pain, because for it, it attaches itself on anything where there is a loss. So it comes to you, to your mind, and begins to reveal to you false evidence. Can you believe? That manager you call your friend, he was the one in the meeting that said we should fire you. And then before you know it, you could get another job, yes, right? But because of other voices that have added on to the loss, praise the Lord, you, you feel so much pain. And this pain, you divert it from the, from the job itself that you lost to people, to individuals. If it is a loss of a contract, if it's a loss of anything, of an asset, even when you lose it before a judge, still there is pain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, I hate pain. Ah, you got to speak. Tell your neighbor I hate pain. Okay, that is, that is better. That is better. And now, the thing is this. To some, that pain goes easily. But to another, it takes years. It's, some of it even never goes away. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And many of us do not know how to deal with that pain. I remember years ago, I, I, you know, let me be honest with you. I'm not used to preaching from what I wrote. <laughs> I'm used to preaching off head. Eh? <laughs> Aha. So let me tell you a story. I am a man of stories. Mukamans Jewala. Amen. So when I was a teenager, I met this young girl. And quote the word teenager. I met this young girl, and in my heart, I thought this is the woman of my praise the Lord. So I discovered to be a, to marry, you have to have some money. So I in my vacation, I went to, to the far in the village and tried to make money so that when I go into introduction, I have some money and the wedding, praise the Lord. Now, while I was away, things happened and they chucked me, praise the Lord. So I left town life. I left my newly bought computer I was a gamer. I could play games. Praise the Lord. Yes. Then I said I need to get money because now I have to be a man and all that. So I went to the village, made money. A lot of money, by the way. But while I was making the money, they chucked me. So I came back to find out what the reason was and I couldn't get a reason. So I became more hurt. Praise the Lord. And in about a month, I remember fainting. I remember my mom taking me to the hospital for some time. Praise the Lord. It was serious. I told you I was a tea, a teenager. Greetings to Pastor John. He knows teenagers. I was a teenager and uh, so I fainted several times by the way. I remember one time I was on a phone call and the babe told me certain words. I collapsed. Praise the Lord. And I Long story short, I found myself on drips. Praise the Lord. So because of that pain, I got depressed. 
I got diseases. I got a couple of things. And then a month later, a friend of mine who was a friend to her told me what had happened and the reason why I was chucked. And then she told me, you know what, this girl got pregnant. And then that one hurt me more. So I got another heart pain. Until I didn't deal with the pain, by the way. So what happened, I diverted the pain to something else. So I began hurting girls, praise the Lord. I didn't know I was doing it because So I began because I didn't deal with the pain. The pain was in my heart and I thought I had overcome it. But let me tell you something that even when they, somebody spoke the name of that girl, I would switch off. Praise the Lord. I would switch off. And that was around 20, 2011. Praise the Lord. And in 2015, I, I recommitted my life to Jesus. Jesus healed me. Jesus set me free. But in between 2011 and 2015, that story of my life is a whole movie. Because a girl hurt me and I got pain. Praise the Lord. And I remember the words of the Lord. He told me, son, I have healed you. I said, okay. And I'm giving you favor before my girls. Hurt them and see me. Praise the Lord. He said, hurt any of them and see me. From 2015 to 2020, I saw no girl in my life. Because I was on a command, hurt them and see in fact, I had given up on them. Friends of mine told me, Simon, why aren't you dating? Praise the Lord. But by then, God had healed me. Praise the Lord. God had healed me until I saw this beautiful woman. She seated right there. And then my love arose again. The true love arose. And because God had healed me, when I saw her, I saw my life. I saw my future. Long story short, we have a daughter and she's right behind praising the Lord. Hallelujah. So this thing called pain, it is for real, my friend. And many of us have not dealt with it. You move around with it and you don't even know that you are hurting one another. And until you, you get your healing, you will never ever progress in life. I was conversing with one of my men Mugabe here, he told me, I told him I'm going to teach about the antidote of pain. And Mugabe told me, you know what, Simon? That antidote is Jesus. I said, you read my notes. That takes me to my next part of my story. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is that pain that arises from a loss. Hallelujah. And there is that pain that arises from a heartbreak. I've given you a story of it. It could be a mother-son relationship. It could be a minister to, 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 to the shepherd, to the sheep. I remember I was also heartbroken. Man, my life has been full of heart, heartbreaks. Praise the Lord. And, and somehow I deny pain. My wife knows. She tells me, man, babe, honey, you are hurting. And I say, oh, limbo, limbo. by the truth of the matter, I be hurting. So I remember something happened and I was hurt. And I didn't know that I was until I sat down and I forgave someone. And after forgive someone, it was a command from the Lord. And that is when I, re I realized that I was carrying pain. Let me tell you something, child of God. If you are hurting and let me just give an example I have given. You be in this relationship. Your heart is broken. You enter another with it. Trust me. The, uh, the, the icing is going to fade a few months after marriage. And then the wife is going to begin telling us, the pastors, I don't know the man I married. Praise the Lord. The man has changed. Why? Because you went into that thing when you are hurting. Even if it is a job. Praise the Lord. That is why I tell your neighbor. You need this antidote. For pain. Praise the Lord. You need the antidote. 
for pain in Israel. We have been praying for Israel. People are killing each other. Why? Because they are hurting. They have pain. You ask them, what did, what did those kids that you killed do? They will tell you, by Judge Yahweh. They will refer you to history. Praise the Lord. And that pain has never dealt with. Pain can be passed on. If you serve you want to and because of that you start hurting people so we've discovered there is a pain that arises from losses there is a pain that arises from heartbreaks praise the lord and and then what happens is this this is what happens when you have pain just as i did you begin hurting others hallelujah you become bitter and then you walk in the realms of i don't care let me tell you something there is a pain that is kind of natural. But if you do not deal with it. It can destroy you. And that is the pain of a loved one. I have met men. And women. Who were so good. Before they lost their. Maybe mother or father. But from the time their mother or father passed on. They changed. Do I have a witness in this place? I have seen it happen. And you trace back. And you'll be like, why did this man change? Why does he now use the tongue, I don't care? It is simply because something happened in his life. And no one was there to comfort them. And he got into isolation. He got into depression. And the pain has gone on and on. And now they are hurting others. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the, the thing about pain is that when you have a pain, you be a carrier of bitterness. Whether you know it or not, you be a carrier of anger. Whether you believe it or not. And it takes shapes. It can be a father wound. Remember they talked about that on, at Encounter Church. You can look for the sermon. It can manifest even as a mother wound. It is pain. It's basically pain that you are carrying in the inside of you. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to the antidote of pain. Hallelujah. And let us go to Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 2. Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 2. Can we read it together? This is what it says. Remember we said there is a pain that arises from... Give me verse 2. That arises from losing... A loved one and it's a very very profound profound pain it's, it's it's very bad personally i don't know how to console those who mourn but when you read the scripture this is what it says verse one it says that let us read it together the spirit of the lord god is upon me because the lord no we are not reading together i am the one reading so let us read it together on a count of three. It's upon me. Because God has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has set Masao. You see this? He has sent me to do what? Ask your neighbor, are you broken hearted? Ask them. You turn to your neighbor. You turn to your neighbor and ask them, are you, are you broken hearted? Eh? Then tell them, I've been sent to heal you. <laughs> huh? To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Continue. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance 
And then let us read this together in a loud voice. One, two, three, we go. To comfort all who mourn. Let me tell you something. The spirit of the living God is upon us to comfort whoever that is mourning. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you. People are mourning. In the next scripture, the Bible says to console those who mourn in Zion. People are mourning. There are so many heart pains that are arising from mourning. And the beauty of this is that we have been anointed to comfort those who mourn. So the first antidote to pain, tell your neighbor, it is us. Uh, you speak louder. Those online need to know that you are in. So the next time they also come, say it is us. And now you could be there asking yourself, what if I have been isolated? Because what the enemy does in the times of pain, he isolates you. You don't want to open up to anyone. You feel the story is too long to share. So what happens when you are alone? Tell your neighbor, what do you do? The Bible says you are the same anointed person. You know, I have learned a lot of things from David. David puts himself here. Then today he says, I'm going to speak to my body. <laughs> then the next day he says, I'm going to speak to my soul. Then, then another day he says, I'm going to speak to my heart. And then he says, my soul, my soul. My soul, my soul. Praise the Lord. So sometimes you've got to be the comforter for yourself. Praise the Lord. Because you are anointed. You've got to separate yourself from certain things. The part of your life that is alive should begin because you, 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 you've got to speak to yourself and say, hey, I know you lost someone. I know my soul you are grieving. But be comforted. You've got to comfort yourself. You've got to speak life to yourself. There are so many times, let me give an example of sickness and disease. The word of God says we shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall be healed. Amen? And then we talked about healing the broken hearted. Some of our hearts are not just uh, for, for the, 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 the way this pain can be dealt with is through healing. It's through that heart being bound together if that is the word. Praise the Lord. So sometimes you've got to release healing to your heart yourself. The Bible says that you shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall be healed. So what happens when you are alone in the house in the middle of the night you, there is nobody to lay hands on you, on, 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 your, on your hand and then you say Mukama, mutukofu, give me a scripture, give me a word and the Lord says, my word says you shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall be healed. What do you do? Pardon? You get your hand. And you say what is painting? My eyes. The word of God says. I shall lay hands on the sick. And the sick shall be. So my eyes, my eyes. Hear the word of God. Be healed in Jesus' name. My heart, I know you are grieving. I know you are mourning. But the Lord has anointed me. Because his spirit is upon me. To heal the broken hearted. So tonight. Is your night of healing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you. While I am taking you. I am telling you it is not suckers. I do this on the daily. My wife knows that. And I taught her to do it. And didn't I? She says this. I do it. It works. Tell your neighbor it's working. You've got to speak to your mind. Because the mind, the, the pain comes from here to here. Praise the Lord. So you've got to speak to your soul. My soul, my soul. Hear the word of God. The Lord is your strength. I know you are failing. But the Lord is your strength. So arise. Don't be downcast. I remember David telling his heart. Why are you downcast? Arise for your God is in control. Praise the Lord. So you've got to comfort those who mourn. Including you if you are the one that mourns. But I also want to encourage you. If you have people in your life that are mourning, that have lost loved ones. Okay, I love money. No. 
I love that you support them with finances. But reach out. Be in their lives. Ask them how they right? Praise the Lord. We are believers. We are children of God. We do life together. Don't let them to go through it alone. And somehow, you see them and be like, No. They are still battling with it. Praise the Lord. So you've got to, to comfort them, to speak to them, to check on them. By the way, how are you? Oh, Yota, to Gindekoa. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And this is so close to my heart. And this, this also touches what I've said that surround yourself with godly people who will lift up your spirit. Hallelujah. Many times, Mama, uh, Pastor Angel, always says that, man, your, your social capital is your wealth. And me, I want to say your social capital is your health. Praise the Lord. Your heartbreak is as a result of your social capital. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So you've got to surround those who are godly around you. That when you are hurting, they are people who shall lift you up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ask your friend, who are your friends? When you are hurting, who is there for you? You ask them. Eh? You ask, by the way, you ask them. At night where you are hurting, and Pastor Chimuri's phone is off, and Pastor Sally's phone is off. Whom do you call? And you know that you know they will praise the Lord. Eh? Now you tell them. You turn to them. If you are married, don't turn to them. Turn to your husband. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mugambe, you can trust me. <laughs> praise the Lord. So surround yourself with godly people who will lift up your spirit. Uncle Jeff, uh, kindly uh, throw for us Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries up bones. Don't surround yourself with people who are already hurting. So you are hurting, you, they broke your heart. You get a woman, he, they broke her heart. So now, Kabisa. So before you know it, the children are hurting. So surround yourself with people who are godly. Who will lift up your spirit when you are hurting. How do you know? Have social capital. From the many, you will know. You will know. I was telling my wife, but honey, I'm beginning to know who my friends are. And she told me, I also know them. I know those who call you when they have issues. And I know those who love you. Yes, you know when you call, she tells me somebody is calling. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These women we marry, they know. And then the last antidote is the best antidote. The rest are the works of men. So they can work or they cannot the rest are the works of the rest was wisdom it can work or it cannot now the epitome of it is this one did I tell you the antidote for pain I got I told you in 2015 I surrendered I re-surrendered my life to Jesus and every pain disappeared. It vanished. Nange neunya. Praise the Lord. It so surrender to God. One of the things I've discovered with believers is that we are people of one of tell your neighbor one of today you come to church, 
Yushanda. Next Friday, no Simbura. So we are not consistent. We don't fully surrender. The Bible says that um, Psalms, 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 yes, I believe, not somewhere. Psalms um, 55, 22. And as we come to an end, Psalms 55, 22. Psalms 55:22 It says cast your burdens on the Lord and he shall sustain you he shall never permit the righteous to be moved You've got to cast your burdens to God Just tell your neighbor you've got to cast your burdens to the God to God and when you do don't pick them again. You remember an illustration Pastor Angel gave us. You know that woman when she preaches I click so much. She, she gave us an illustration when you carry your baggage then you come to the Lord. These ones have hurt me. You know I got losses. I am hurting. Lord heal me. You mean, you mean the broken hearted. You are near the broken hearted. Lord heal me tonight. We encounter. Even the pastors mentioned it. I received my healing. So Lord I am healed. Then after. You pack. Your baggage. And then you go back. The Bible says when you bring it to the Lord. Leave it there. Praise the Lord. Leave it there. Praise the Lord. Leave the situation before him. And tell him. My mother wasn't there. My dad wasn't there. But Lord I leave it before you. Because I know. That I know. You are able to handle it. You are able to turn that hurting. Into good. Because you are a God. Who turned what the enemy meant for evil. Into good. See what the Lord did. Praise the Lord. When I surrendered it to Christ, when I surrendered, when I surrendered everything to Jesus, see the beautiful woman I have and see the offspring. Everyone is telling me, Simon, your daughter is out of this planet. And I say, Amen. She carries uh, the blood group of B. Plus. She's my DNA. Praise the Lord. And that all manifests when you cast it all to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In other scripture, I think it will be a repetition, but you shall read it in your free time. It is 1 Peter 5, 7. But Jeff, I want you to draw here. Psalms 147 verses 3. In your free time, you shall read 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, verse 3. But Psalms, and this is what the Lord is saying to you and I. He says he heals the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord. And binds up their wounds they are wounds that you carry you've been carrying for years you've been carrying for years maybe you were defiled when you were young and from that time you hate your cousin you you are carrying a, a bitterness you you are hurting you are carrying pain in you the lord is saying you know what first cast it to me why because i heal the brokenhearted Praise the Lord. I bind up their hearts. I know it's my, they break my heart. There is even a song. But the Lord is saying that I will bind your heart. Praise the Lord. I will bind your heart and I will heal you because that is what he does. That is what he is famous for. He is able to give you the joy, the, the peace, the heavy heart you've been hurting has been a result of your hurting in the heart. The rejection you are carrying, it came upon you because of the spirit of pain that you've been in. That wherever you are, you are a conduit of heart. But the Lord is saying, I am able. I am able to heal you. I am able to bind you up in Jesus' name. And you know why that is so true? Psalms... I think it's 73, verse 26. I don't know if that is the one. I think it is Psalms 34, verse 18. That says, he is near the broken hearted. Jeff, Psalms 34, verse 20, verse 18. Praise the Lord. He is near 
the broken hearted. The Lord is near the broken hearted. So if you are broken, if you have pain in your heart, let me tell you something. He could be far from the others, but for you, for your sake, he is right where you are. He's not far from you. In the middle of the night, he is near. Yes, on the road while you're moving, he is near you. And he is just waiting for you to say, Lord, I cast this before you. Heal me, bind me up, and I shall be healed. Gwalumo mutima. When you call, why? Because he's near. And that is the fact. That is truth. So many people have encountered God when they are hurting. Why? Because the word of God is true. Some of us encountered God because we were hurting. And because you were hurting in your heart. The Lord is so near to you because you are fertile ground for the gospel. Praise the Lord. So if you are hurting, you have pain in your heart. You have more right to call on the Lord because he's near you in Jesus' name. Time is again says to us in Psalm 62 verse 8. Pour out your heart. Isaiah 41 10 says, He will strengthen you. He is your strength. James 5 13 says, if you are suffering, pray. Don't weep. Don't isolate yourself. Jeff just wrote for me James 5.13. He says if you are suffering, pray. If you are hurting in your heart, do what? Pray. Talk to your father. Surrender to him. When you are hurting, it's not a moment for you to isolate yourself. It's not a moment for you to run away from his presence. It's not a moment for you to, to go somewhere and start weeping and you go into bars and spoil yourself like I did years ago. The moment you are hurting, don't run away. Don't get substitutes of things. Just go before your father. Because the word of God says, if you are hurting, let him who is cheerful full sing but is anyone anyone among you suffering let him pray praise the lord me when they ask me why are you praying i tell them because i am suffering sometimes praise the lord praise the lord because he says if we are hurting if we are suffering we should pray so i want to encourage you as you rise up on your feet God is able to mend and heal the brokenhearted. Come on, rise up on your feet. He's able to mend and heal the brokenhearted. And he's able to do it for us as his kids. He's near us. I know your heart could be failing. I know your heart could be failing. And you're here in the same old tosomba. For me, also for, me, for me, I can't handle it. My heart is failing. I have no strength. I don't know what to do. Let me tell you. The antidote is resurrender. Surrender to him. Talk to him. And he will heal you. He will bind you up. And you shall be like me. In Jesus' name. You shall rejoice. You shall rejuvenate. Even those who hurt you will find you. And they say, you go to hurting because you shall be in so much joy in Jesus' name. Because the word of God is so true in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you because you heal the brokenhearted. And Lord, like the physical pain which is seen, these ones they can never be seen. They are inside of us. But Lord, there is nothing that you do not know. My God, you are all-knowing. Yet you desire that we cast them, all the burdens to you. You desire we talk to you about all our pains. So Father, as your daughters and sons surrender to you, as we recommit to you, my master, as we resurrender to you, Lord, I know that I know your healing is manifesting. And Father, I prophesy, none of us shall again carry heart pain. Lord, I prophesy that it shall come to pass when none of us is carrying pain, when none of us is hurting others, when, when none of us is, 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 is into anger and bitterness. Because when you say you will do something, 
You do it for the glory of your name. You are the God who never fails us. You are the God who never leaves us. You promise to be our strength. So my father, I pray that you who is a master, who is a God, that he who is the broken hearted, you who is a God that our, is our strength, may you indeed be our strength. Every heart here that is failing, that is hurting, my Lord, I pray that you shall minister to us with your healing tonight in Jesus' name. And it shall come to pass when we all testify that the Lord healed me in Jesus' name. Amen.